ultimately, I regret the fact that many people without understanding that this was uh, an anti-money laundering decision, started ridiculing the decision. And today, if you said it, was it unreasonable for the bank to say that today there is no scope for earning old currency? All exemptions are phased out. Whatever you have, please go and deposit it. Why do you want to come every day and crowd around the bank? Now, what's wrong with a decision like this? It's a fairly reasonable decision. Uh, Mr. Jaitley, uh, you know, let me take you back to the political realm of questioning and once again I bring uh, you back to the question that Rahul Gandhi has been asking that all the money that has uh, come into the banks now will be available to the industry at lower rates of interest. So he says this is giving away the poor man's money to the industrialists. How well, do you respond to that criticism? Well, I don't think uh, uh, this country has reached a situation where we need an economic advice of that kind. You see, once, uh, once, uh, once uh, money comes into the banking system, where is the money going to be spent? Once more taxes come with the government, where is the money going to be spent? Let's be very clear. The model of uh, expenditure that you will spend on infrastructure, every man will benefit irrespective of his caste, his income or his religion. You will have an increased amount for social sector spending. You will have a lot more money to spend on irrigation. You will have a lot more money to spend on rural housing. You will have a lot more money to spend on those villages that Piyush Goel was just speaking about which don't have electricity. You will also have a lot of money to lend to businesses and industries that they create jobs for the poor people. So therefore, I think the management of the economy doesn't really depend on the kind of slogans which some people raise. Now there's a different, there was an age in 1971 where slogans prevailed over economic reality. But I think India under 2016 is significantly different where economic substance will be far more important than those slogans. And therefore, once this money comes into the banking system or additional revenues come to the government, both of these are being capable of being used in multiple manners for the larger benefit of the economy which benefits every Indian. Mr. Jaitley, uh, my last question to you would be again on political funding, something that you touched upon. The election commission has come up with recommendations that any donation to a political party above the level of rupees 2000 should be transparent, should be declared. Uh, it's uh, somehow similar to the questions that would be asked of the Aam Admi above 5000 rupees, as you uh, just said, was the RBI notification. When will political parties be treated as par with the Aam Admi? I'll tell you, I think this is one of the biggest problems of Indian democracy. That conventionally from independence, right from the first election in 1952, the world's largest democracy had invisible funding. Now parliamentary democracy, elections, political parties, these are a necessary part of the system. And therefore they will require to be funded. As of today, we don't have state funding, and therefore you rely on donations. Now, conventionally in India, all political funding was an invisible funding. When Mr. Vajpayee was the Prime Minister, as a law minister since I was dealing with the election laws, I had moved various amendments in Parliament. One, we allowed individuals, companies, partnerships, HUFs to donate by check then in order to incentivize people to donate by check so that part funding becomes transparent, we said if you donate a certain amount by check, in case of your own wealth, you can donate any amount. But if it is a company which is shareholders' money also, you can donate up to a maximum of 5% of the profits of a company. To the extent that you give money to a political party by check, it will be deemed deductible expenditure so as to incentivize people. My own impression is that between the year 2001 or so when I brought this amendment till now in the last 15 years, some part of political funding has become overground. But you may be quite right in your criticism that a 
part is still an underground invisible funding. Now, how do you address the challenge? Once we go from a, it, and transform into a less cash economy, the donors of the political parties won't have the kind of money in future to donate. And they are going to straight away tell the political parties that you are the ones who have brought this change and therefore don't expect us to give you any invisible funding. We will fund you, but we will fund you by check. And that's how it should be. I think digitization of the economy gives us a great opportunity. And a great opportunity is that an ideal funding system would be, I am conscious of what the aberrations today are, and the two that I can point out, one is that the invisible donations, which election commission says anonymous. Below 20,000 rupees. And the second is that when political parties got uh, exemption, and there are about 40 to 50 or 60 political parties which effectively contest elections in India in the center of the states. You have a large number of political parties that got registered, not for contesting election, but for availing tax exemption. Now this part is easier to tackle. I've already asked the Revenue Secretary to look into this, and therefore we'll have to put a threshold criteria so that we are able to eliminate those which are not real political parties, but only for money conversion which have come in. There are 12, over 1,200 such political parties. All these political parties which don't contest elections, but have only come in to accept donations and convert money. I've already told the Revenue Department to look at them. And therefore, some threshold criteria could be fixed and a number of these could be eliminated. So that's the first important reform. The second is the direction, and that's why the Prime Minister supported the Election Commission's call. We have to try and make India's political funding as transparent as possible. Donations must be smaller in size, but huge in numbers. So if you have, through the digital mode, lakhs and lakhs of people contributing to the BJP or the Congress or the Samajwadi Party through the digital mode. Now, I think this doesn't create a quid pro quo. This is how the system works in some of the most developed democracies in the world. Political funding is necessary. It should be smaller in denomination. It should be larger in terms of its spread. And therefore, not creating a quid pro quo and it should be absolutely transparent. Now, these being the underlying factors, this is the spirit behind what the Election Commission has said. And eventually, it may be worthwhile to try and make efforts only for genuine political parties to get those benefits, and then start moving towards donations predominantly in the manner. The reform we brought about in Mr. Vajpayee's government uh, partly solved the problem, but not entirely. Again, 2004 to 14, nothing happened in this direction. And I think at this stage, this is probably a direction we could try. This is not a decision of the government. This is my own loud thinking. But this is uh, what I would like to suggest both within and outside the government. Well, that's going to be a very welcome change. Uh, Mr. Finance Minister, with your permission, we'll take two questions from the audience. I think we have question number one uh, coming in from table number five. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself and ask your question to the Finance Minister. Yeah, Mr. Aram, I'm uh, Derek from Huawei India. I'm in charge of Huawei uh, Enterprise Business in India. So may I ask a question that is, uh, what is your expectations from the digital uh, infrastructure provider like Huawei to promote the, the uh, digital economy? Thanks. Well, I can tell you, I heard a part of the earlier discussion. We have infrastructure problems, but let's not underestimate our infrastructure. For example, India today, Navika asked a question to Piyush as to the underutilization of the ATMs. Now, India has about 75 crore, that is 750 million credit card and debit cards in the market today. Of this 450 million, that's 45 crores, are actively used. The credit cards are only about 2.5 crores. 
The rest are all debit cards because credit cards, uh, there is a larger commission involved, so Indian uh, uh, traders really don't fancy them so much. So 45 crore people, and India has only 25 crore families, which includes the BPL families also. So 45 crore credit cards are under active user, or debit cards are in active user. Now we need to provide more establishments with the POS machine. So I have waived off all excise and customs duties from um, the entire infrastructure so that the infrastructure becomes cheaper. Today, about 1.5 million establishments have the POS machines. So the idea is to get more and more POS machines and make them reach the markets. And just to indicate to you the kind of rapid pace at which it's taking place. On the 2nd of December, we announced a decision that uh, petrol pumps can only use new currency, not the old one. Today I am on the 20th. In the last 18 days, 55% of the petrol pumps in India have gone digital. And 53% of their consumers are now paying them by the digital mode. So that's the pace at which it has started. The international head, the CEO of the Uber told me that 10% people were paying by the digital mode. In the last one month, the figure has increased to 50%. If that's the rapid increase which is taking place. So we need more POS machines, the point of sale machines at establishments. Then as an alternative to the card system, we also have the e-wallet system. And that's also millions of e-wallets. Though people, I think the applications have to be made a little more simpler. You don't have to have uh, six steps and seven steps in an application finally to impact the payment. If you can do it by two or three steps, the application is simpler. You'll be able to do it much faster. The Aadhaar-based system is actually useful for people who neither have a card nor have a mobile phone. And since Aadhaar, the jam credit, the Janadhan account, the so people have a bank account, then they have an Aadhaar number. If he walks into an establishment and he has an account in which let us say he has 10,000 rupees and he wants to make the payment, his thumb really is his card. He gives his Aadhaar number, the shopkeeper has a device which is a simple device which is attached to his mobile phone. He gives his Aadhaar number, the amount to be credited is fixed and he puts his thumb on that device. So the Aadhaar transmission is taking place. Yesterday I had a meeting with the chairpersons of All Bank and the IT department which is trying to push this. Once this system comes in, I can tell you the Aadhaar system is such which is peculiar only to India. No other country in the world has it. So while the other countries will be only on e-wallets and uh, 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 debit and credit cards, we'll have the third mode, which is that your thumb is sufficient, a number and your thumb is sufficient to make sure that the money transfers from your bank account uh, uh, into uh, uh, the vendor that you are paying.